At some point, every riser makes the same mistake. You add one thing, then another, then another, and your setup looks more impressive with each addition, at least in screenshots. But somewhere along the way, something shifts. It stops feeling good to use, and it becomes harder to maintain. You're not enjoying it anymore, you're just managing it. And the worst part, you can't figure out why. You've done everything right, you've themed everything, so why does your setup feel worse than it did three weeks ago when it was half as complete? Now, here's the uncomfortable truth. You've overriced, and more rising isn't going to fix it. Less will. Today, I'm going to be showing you the exact mistakes that push setups past the point of diminishing returns, why they happen, and how to know when to stop. Now, the first thing. There's a curve to rising that nobody talks about. In the beginning, every change that you make has a big impact. You add a bar, huge improvement. Like this one over here. Like Let's say that you make a couple of different bar configs, and you set up a functionality that lets you switch between them. That is most definitely a big impact. Then let's say you pick a color palette. Right now I'm using Grovebox. If I wanted to, I could switch to something like Everforest, and that actually makes a difference. I can use different bar combinations as well. Let's say after Everforest, I chose something like Kanagawa, and that's what that looks like. If I were to show you one last one, that would probably be something like E-Ink, as you can see here. Pretty slick and minimal. And so everything comes together. You configure gaps and borders, and it starts to feel like yours. But the further you go, the less each addition actually matters. That 15th waybar module doesn't improve your setup the way the first five did. And that extra animation doesn't make things feel more polished, it just makes them busier. This is diminishing returns. And most people don't notice when they've crossed the line. They keep adding because adding feels like progress. The setup keeps changing, but it stops getting better. And eventually it starts getting worse. Now here's the trap. When you feel that your setup is just off, your instinct is to add something to fix it another module, another effect, or maybe another tweak, okay? But often, the problem isn't that something's missing. The problem is that there's too much. The solution isn't addition, it's subtraction. Now, here's the next thing. The first concrete sign that you've overriced, okay, is that maintenance, is that maintenance becomes a headache. You want to change one thing, one color, one value, let's say, and then suddenly everything else breaks. And this doesn't necessarily happen more during the beginner stages when you're still using one color scheme, but this happens more so when you're configuring stuff like custom theme switchers that depend where actually multiple menus and programs and stuff de depend on one color file. Let's say you tweak a color's opacity, okay? For Rafi right over here, I change this color's opacity for this menu specifically. Now, because this is actually being depended on by this menu, the wallpaper switcher, as well as the layout switcher, okay? It's going to change it for every single one. That's not what you originally intended. You are just one variable, and just because of that, unintended changes happen. Now this happens when your setup becomes too interconnected without you realizing it. You've layered on so many customizations on top of each other that they've become dependent in ways that you didn't plan. And now, you're stuck. You want to make changes, but you're actively discouraged from touching anything because you don't know what will break. Your rice has become fragile. You're not controlling it anymore, you're just trying not to disturb it. And this is a sign that complexity has outpaced your understanding. You've added more that you can maintain. You've added more than you can maintain. The fix isn't to push through and figure out all the dependencies. The fix is to simplify until your setup is something that you can actually modify without fear. Strip out the things that are causing the fragility and get back to a foundation that you can understand. A setup you're afraid to touch isn't actually a good setup, no matter how, look, how good it looks in screenshots. Now let's talk about specific mistakes, the ones that I see constantly and the ones that I've made myself. The first thing is transparency set too high. Now, if I were to tell you right now, this is actually a good amount of transparency, because you can actually see, still see the contents of the window. And if I switch to an even darker wallpaper, something that I would most likely be using if I were coding, let's say, something like this one over here, the opacity doesn't make that much of a difference at all because the background is dark. So this kind of transparency is what you want to aim for, not something that's way too light that doesn't let anything through. That le actually lets too much through. And just because of its nature, transparency is the most seductive trap in rising. You see those r slash unix pawn posts with windows that you can see through everything layered and glassy and it looks incredible so you crank up transparency on everything and in screenshots it does look cool but then you actually try and use it you're reading documentation let's say and the wallpaper is bleeding through the text you're writing code and the window behind is distracting you and you're trying to focus but your eyes are fighting through layers of translucency just to see what's in front of you transparency is a trade-off a little bit adds depth and makes your setup feel alive too much makes it unusable and i've done this myself personally i set active opacity to 0.6 once because it looked beautiful in screenshots and it did until i actually tried to work windows looked dreamy and aesthetic but they were damn near unusable 
I couldn't read text without straining. I was squinting at my own setup. I set it back to 1 for active windows and that solved the problem. Which means if, if you want transparency, just keep it subtle. 0.9 or 0.95 for active windows. Lower only for inactive windows where you don't need to read anything. The goal is a hint of depth and not a fever dream. Now the next thing is related but different, okay? The active opacity that I just mentioned earlier. Keeping active opacity below 0.75. Here's the thing about window opacity, okay? Whenever you make a window transparent, everything in the window becomes transparent. This is the terminal, so you're not actually going to be controlling this thing's transparency using Hyperland, okay? This is going to be the terminal specific, but if I showed you a window like the file manager here, currently active opacity is set to one because of which the window is opaque. Let's say you turn down active opacity for this particular window. What would happen is the window becomes transparent, which means everything in the window becomes transparent as well. The background, yes, but also the text, the UI elements and everything. If I were to show you that real quick, it would be right here. Config, hyper modules, decoration, right here somewhere. Active opacity right here. Let's uncomment this. Okay, and as you can see, everything becomes much, much lighter. And I had this set to something like 0.75, right? And yeah, it does look pretty good, especially with the frosted glass back and everything. But that makes text that much harder to read as well. Now imagine trying to read code and write stuff like this. Definitely not what you want to be doing if you want to save your eyes from going blind soon. If there was a way to blur only the background while keeping text crisp and opaque, low opacity would work beautifully. But that's not how it works. When you set opacity to 0.6 or something like 0.95, your text is also at 0.6% opacity. 0.6 opacity. It becomes faded, washed out, and really hard to read. You're trading legibility for aesthetics, and legibility should almost always win because you actually want to use this thing. Anything below 0.75 opacity is dangerous territory, including that value itself. You might not notice the strain immediately, but over hours of use, your eyes are working harder than they should, and that's not a sustainable setup. That's a setup you'll abandon in two weeks because it exhausts you. Now here's another one, blur on Rafi right here. Currently I have it turned off because it doesn't actually look good, and I'll tell you why just right about now. Now this also applies to any launcher with rounded corners that are styled via CSS. This looks great in theory, right? Frosted glass app launcher, very clean, very modern. But here's the problem, Hyperland's blur doesn't know about your CSS. Whenever you apply rounded corners to Rafi using CSS, you're styling the content. The actual layer is still rectangular, and so when Hyperland applies blur, it blurs the entire rectangular layer, including the corners where no Rafi pixels are even being displayed. And so, you end up with blur bleeding outside your rounded corners, and it looks broken. There's no way to fix it without either removing the blur entirely, or removing the rounded corners. This is a case where two good things, blur and rounded corners, don't work together. If you wanted to just do something like transparency, maybe that would actually work out, but blur, definitely not. You have to choose, and recognizing that, rather than trying to force it, is part of rising well. Not every effect belongs in every setup. Sometimes the right choice is to leave something out. Now, let me tell you about the worst setup that I ever built. I had Waybar loaded with modules. This is actually a layout called Ultra Minimal. I did not have Ultra Minimal back then. What I had something was more like Velvet Line, but then loaded up with 15 different modules. Which means not just the essentials, literally everything I could think of. CPU, GPU, RAM, disk space, ne network traffic, weather, Spotify now playing, system tray overflowing. If there was a module for it, I had it. And my gaps were absolutely massive. Not something minimal like what you're seeing here, okay? It's pretty much as big as the state of Texas, the gaps that I had back then. I thought more gaps meant more minimal. It actually just meant less usable screen space. And shadows were dark and prominent. The shadows that you see here, nothing of the sort. Here it actually looks pretty minimal and it's hugging really the window very closely, but this was not what I had back then. Every window looked like it was hovering three inches off the screen. Dramatic? Sure. Also distracting because my eye kept catching the shadows instead of the content. And the worst, active opacity at 0.75. I already told you how that went. The setup looked incredible in screenshots. I really enjoyed using it. Using it. That <laughs> Just looking at it, I mean by that. And then I actually tried to use it in my daily work for a week. The modules I never looked at were taking up bar space. The gaps were eating my screen. The shadows were pulling my attention. And the opacity was giving me eye strain. And so I stripped it all back, removed two thirds of the waybar modules, cut the gaps in half, softened the shadows, set opacity back to one for active windows, and my setup got better. Not just more usable, more beautiful, because now there was actually room to breathe. Now the things that remained actually stood out. And that's what I learned. The goal isn't to add everything that you can. The goal is to add only what earns its place. So how do you know when you've hit the sweet spot? 
when to stop adding and start using. There are two methods, okay? Use both. The first is your inner voice. Your brain is more astute and clever than you give it credit for. Whenever something's off, you feel it. When something's right, you feel that too. The problem is, most of us are so logic brain that we dismiss anything that sounds like vibes. But in rising specifically, that inner voice is your best tool. It's processing aesthetics faster than your conscious mind can articulate. And so when you take a look at your setup and something feels wrong, even if you can't explain why, just trust that feeling. When it feels right, trust that too. The more that you listen to that voice, the better your setups become. Not objectively better, because of course there's no objective scale for how pretty a rice actually looks, but better for you. Which is the whole point. The second method is the one week test. Use your setup for a full week. Don't change anything, just use it, okay? At the end of the week, ask yourself, what distracted me? What did I never notice at all? And what did I wish was there? Anything that distracted you, remove it or turn it down. Anything that you never noticed, consider remo removing it entirely. And anything that you wished was dead, now you can add it intentionally. This gets you very close to the right setup, but to create something truly great, you need both. Inner voice for the creative direction and logic and testing for the refinement. That combination, heart and mind working together, is how you build setups that are both minimal and beautiful, functional and aesthetic. Yours, basically. And if you want to learn this kind of approach systematically, how to build setups with intention, knowing what to add, what to leave out, and why, that's exactly what I teach inside of Hyper Accelerator, which is the program that's the first link in the description. As you can see right over here, it's over 10 hours of content where I cover exactly how to make stuff like custom theme switchers and wallpaper switchers, along with everything you could possibly need, whilst not overrising and adhering to the fundamental principles that underlie rising in the first place, like unity of heart and mind, keeping things simple, and a lot, lot more that I've explained in my videos, as well as insights that I've gathered in my four-year rising journey. So if you want to get access to this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.